If you have your Bibles, turn to John chapter 1. And uh, in our, uh, I'm going to continue in our series in our position in Him. Amen? Our position. Our position is everything. It's where we choose to set ourselves in. And we also know that this year, 2017, it's the year the faithful will flourish. But it, but it really comes down to faithful with what? Faithful being positioned in the right place. Because when you're positioned in the right place and you're planted in the right place, according to the word, it says, if I'm planted, it said, I will flourish, right? So if I'm planted, I will flourish. So when you're planted in the right position, it allows the word of God to work in your life. And, and it allows what Jesus came to do, what Jesus came to provide to work and manifest in your life. Amen. Amen. And so I don't have time to review. I encourage you to go online, go to YouTube, to Heritage of Faith channel, and, and listen to those messages. But I believe it will encourage you. And uh, if you're here last week, I talked about not giving up any ground. And uh, on Tuesday, I was praying, and it's interesting that you know, Dr. Savell had, had the word for the staff. But uh, I woke up Tuesday morning, and I, was, I meet with our staff on Tuesday, at Tuesday afternoons. And this phrase just rose up on the inside of me, and it said, it said we are taking ground, and the kingdom of God is advancing. We are taking ground and the kingdom of God is advancing. See, why do we need to be positioned in him? For one, it's so we don't give up any ground. Our position always rests in Christ. Why do we need to be positioned in him? Because the kingdom of God is about advancing, not retreating. It's not going backwards, right? And so we're going to continue talking about our position in him. Let's look here at John chapter 1, verse 12. And I don't know if I'm going to finish everything that I, that I have in my heart today, we'll see how far we want to go. If not, we'll pick up next Sunday. But verse 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become, to the power, the right or the privilege to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Do you believe on his name this morning? That means that he has given you the right and the privilege to be a son or a daughter of God. So when you accepted, when you believed on his name, it puts you in a new class. It puts you in a new position. And that position is son and daughter of God, right? Amen. Hallelujah. And, and then it says, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Meaning it, wasn't, it didn't come by flesh. Flesh couldn't produce this. My will can't produce it. That's right. Blood, can't, meaning you're not born into it. That's right. Come on. It's only by the will of God. Yes. Come on. So I, it's God's will that you and I be sons and daughters of God. Amen. That's God's will. Say that with me. God's will, God's will. is that I'm a son yes. or a daughter of God. God. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. We are positioned in him so we can take ground. So we can take ground and the kingdom of God can advance. Let's look at verse 2. Under the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. Now get this. He's, so Paul's writing, you think he's just writing to the church of Corinth. No, he's writing also to a group of, a group of people. He tells us once, I'm writing to Corinth, right? Yes, sir. So that's established, of course, we have the book of Corinthians. <laughs> but then he also tells us that it's to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Come on. So you, have, you need to make the word of God personal. Because see, this is, says I'm writing to three sets of people. I'm writing to the church of Corinth. Those that are sanctified in Christ Jesus. If you were born again, you know what? You're sanctified in Christ Jesus. Called to be saints. With all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus. So have you called on the name of Jesus? That means he's writing to you and me. This is for you. And so often we let scripture just go over our head and just, well, we can't really understand. No, he's writing to you. So let's get a hold of what he's writing. So he's writing to those that in every place call upon the name of the Lord Jesus, both theirs and ours. Now listen, so, so what is he writing? Grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to understand grace. 
Verse 4 says, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given to you by Christ Jesus. So when you're positioned in Christ, you're positioned in grace. Let me say it again. When you're positioned in Christ, you're positioned in grace. Joe, I I love what you wrote yesterday about, about Christ. You know, everything always has to come back to Christ. Every message somewhere in it, we need to talk about Christ. That's right. Amen. Yeah. He, he is whom we preached. <laughs> it's him we preach. Him crucified. Amen. And it rose again. So here it says through this grace, it's through this Christ that we've been given this grace. Verse 5, that in everything we're enriched. So because of this grace, verse 5 says that in everything we're enriched by him in all utterance, in all knowledge even as the testimony of Christ was conferred in you. Get that. That you're enriched in everything. Mm, See, a lot of times we're trying to look for something else that we need. But here it says, according to that grace, I'm enriched in Him in everything. Everything. I'm completely satisfied in Him in everything. Verse 7, so that you come behind in no gift. You come behind in no gift waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, a lot of times we also also have the same thought process of, you know what? Well, I'll be completely enriched. I'll completely satisfied when Jesus returns or when I go to heaven. No, he says, you're completely enriched right now, Joey, right? I'm completely enriched now while I'm waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't lack anything when you're positioned in Him. When you're positioned in Him, you have everything that you need. Some of you don't believe that. Well, well, how come I don't see it? Well, maybe because you're not really positioned in Him. Maybe you're more positioned in your trust in the natural than you are in what God can do for you. Maybe you're trying to promote yourself and allowing God to promote you. Maybe you're trying to work out your own salvation and your own healing instead of resting in the healing and the salvation that's already been provided. I'm enriched in everything through Jesus Christ. See, we're called to take ground. We don't lack anything to take ground and the church does not lack anything for the kingdom of God to advance. The question is, do we understand what we've been given and do we understand what's on our life? You see, we've been given everything through Jesus. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. So when you are positioned in Him, you need to get a revelation of what that means and what you've received. Because we just read, we've been enriched in everything. So we've been given everything. We just need to know what, we've been, what we have received. Yeah. Because you'll never be able to take ground or advance if you don't know who you are. That's right. And you don't know what's on your life. That's right. Come on. In Isaiah chapter 9, let's see. We can do verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and the peace there shall be no, no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom. To order it, to establish it with judgment, with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amplified says in verse 7, Of the increase of his government and of the peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom. Get this. The increase of his government. And of peace there shall be no end. Meaning his government and his peace shall not end. That's right. Over his kingdom. So his kingdom has been created to always expand and advance and increase. So when you receive Jesus, what are you receiving? You're receiving 
the government that rests on his shoulder. What are you receiving? You're re receiving the one that's wonderful, the one that's counselor, the one that's mighty, the one that's everlasting father, the one that's prince of peace, and of the increase of his government. Now, this word government is not, our, is not, is not democracy. You see, we, we, try, to, we try to look at, look at God's kingdom as a democracy. Well, I get to choose what I want to do. <laughs> he is the king and will always be the king. And so don't try to measure God by your democratic beliefs. <laughs> That's another message, I think. The word, the word government means rule or authority. So here it says, of the increase of his rule and the increase of his authority and the peace, the completeness, the welfare, there shall be no end. So when I'm resting in positioning in Christ, I'm positioned in a position where I always increase in power, I always increase in authority, and I always increase in peace. Yeah. And it said, it shall be no end. And said, this is the zeal of the Lord. Meaning, this is God's desire. This is what he's passionate about. He's passionate about you and I increasing his kingdom. Is, he's about, he is about you and I manifesting his kingdom on the earth. But you know what? We'll never manifest his kingdom on the earth if we don't know who we are and what's on our life. All right, let's, let's go from the beginning. Let's look at Genesis. Like I said, we might get through this this morning. If not, we'll pick up next week. Because you really need to see. As being positioned in him and being positioned as a son and daughter of God. What you have at your disposal. But yet too often we still live out of here. Instead of live out of here and rest in what we've already been given. So God's desire, we just saw in Isaiah 9, his desire, his zeal, Joseph, is that this government, this rule and authority would increase forever. He says we're going to rule and reign with him for eternity. Our life is so much more than, than our 80 to 120 years that we're, put, we're, we're here. It says we'll rule and reign with him for eternity. Let you think about that for a moment. Yeah, come on. But let's, why, how was man created? Verse 26 of Genesis 1 says, And God said, Let us make man in our image. After our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth. Say, all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Say, the earth. the earth. Verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. Say, bless them. Bless them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Say, the earth. the earth. And subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Say, the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth. Say, all the earth. All the earth. And every tree in which the fruit of the tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth, say the earth. The earth. And to every fowl of the air, say the air. the air. And to everything that creeps upon the earth, say the earth. The earth. Where there is life. I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So what I want you to see here as we talk about this, incre this kingdom increasing and expanding is first we needed to see how was man originally created and what was he given? Right. See, if we're going to take ground and the, and the keys will keep us from taking ground is knowing who we are and what's on our life, then we need to understand how was man originally created. One, he was created in God's image. You could say he was created as God's son. God gave birth to mankind, right? Then what was on his life, he blessed him. Say blessed him. So he could increase. 
multiply yes. everything yes. upon the face of the earth, whether it has to do on the earth, has to do in the air. Everything in our sphere of influence, we are animals required by God, commanded by God, given the power by God to increase it. Yes. See, if, if we want to take ground, we need to understand what we've been given and what's on our life. You're going to hear me say that throughout this morning. What have you been given and what's on your life? Mankind was given the blessing. The blessing was on Adam. Adam in himself didn't have the ability to increase and multiply. But yet with the blessing on his life, he had the ability to increase and have dominion and take ground and advance God's kingdom with the blessing on his life. Yes. Now, now you have to now just stay with me for a moment. In Genesis 3, we see where mankind fell. Why did mankind fall? Because mankind, Adam, was never called to increase and multiply the Garden of Eden. He was made to increase the earth. That's right. Come on. See, mankind was made to multiply, replenish, and increase the earth, but instead, mankind stayed in the Garden of Eden. See, he made the Garden of Eden and he placed him in it, but yet his command and the blessing on his life was to multiply everything outside of the Garden of Eden. See, the Garden of Eden was supposed to be a place of rest, a place of strength, and a place of intimacy. But instead, they got complacent. The word Garden of Eden means to be surrounded by pleasure. So because they were surrounded by pleasure, they become complacent about what they were called to do. And anytime you get complacent about what you're called to do, it opens you up for deception. You see, if they were outside multiplying the earth and increasing the earth, instead of being complacent with pleasure, they would have never been deceived. See, they never stepped in what they were really called to do. They stayed in a place of pleasure. He didn't say, I want you to multiply and increase the Garden of Eden. He says, I want you to replenish the earth. And God allowed the Garden of Eden to be a place that they could retreat to, to be refreshed, have intimacy with him, to go back and advance his kingdom over the whole earth. So don't settle for pleasure. Don't settle for just being comfortable because you'll never fulfill your calling if you stay comfortable. The only way that you're going to impact and advance the kingdom and what you're called to do is when you choose to get outside and allow the blessing to work on your life. The blessing was all about increasing God's kingdom. Let's go to Genesis chapter 12. Look at the blessing. See, so we need to understand who we are and what's on our life. Now the Lord has said to Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy house unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee. Say, I will bless thee. I will bless thee. And I will make thy name great. And you shall be a blessing. So when the blessing is on your life, it will cause you to release the blessing. When the blessing is on your life, it will cause people to recognize you. So the blessing that comes on your life causes you to influence. And influence is the power and the authority to affect, alter, or change something. And I will bless thee, I will bless them, and they will bless thee, curse them that curse thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. See, all the earth, say all the earth. So here we see again, the blessing was about all the earth. It was about increasing God's kingdom on all the earth, not just where he was. Let's go to chapter 13. Verse 12. Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the city of the valley, Jordan Valley, and moved his tent as far as Sodom and dwelt there. 
Now get this, Abram, who God told him to leave his place and said he had blessed him, but yet Abram was living in the land of Canaan. What is the land of Canaan? The word Canaan means, a pla- land of Canaan means a place of humiliation. The word Canaan in the Hebrew means to be humiliated. Verse 13 says, But then the men of Sodom were wicked and exceedingly great sinners against the Lord. And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had had left him, Lift up now your eyes and look from the place where you are, north, south, east, and west. For all the land which you see I will give to you and to your posterity forever. And I will make your descendants like the dust of the earth, so that if a man could count the dust of the earth, then could your descendants also be counted." Arise, walk through the land, the length of it, the breadth of it, for I will give it to you. Then Abram moved his tent, came and dwelt among the oaks of the terebrinths of Mamre, which are at Hebron, and he built there an altar unto the Lord. Now get this. Abraham's living in a place, we already know the blessings on him, right? And he's living in a place of humiliation. But in in his place of being humiliated, God says, lift up your eyes and look everywhere you look. And everywhere you can see, I've given that to you. See, God's all about taking ground. God is all about increase. He's all about expanding influence and advancing the kingdom of God. Everywhere you look, Abram, I place the blessing on you. So in order for you to walk in this blessing first, you've got to look around and stop just staying in this place of humiliation. Too often people are staying in humiliation instead of stepping into grace so they can step into righteousness and, and then walk in the blessing. And so he tells them, look, and everywhere you place your foot, everywhere you go, I've given it to you. To you. And you see the dust of the ground, I'm going to multiply that. That means that, means that I want to increase beyond your, your man-made ability to understand it, Abraham. And he says, okay, so what did he do? Moved his place to a place called Mamre. What, what does that mean? He went from a place of humiliation to a place of abundance. How could he get to a place of abundance when he recognized who he was and he recognized what was on his life? The word memory it means strength and it means abundance. He went from a place of humiliation to a place of strength and abundance. See, that's what the blessing. The blessing is meant to take you from humiliation to a place of abundance and a place of strength. The blessing is on our lives to cause us to take ground and advance his kingdom. Let's look at Genesis 50. Am I talking too fast? Genesis 50. Thank you, Lord. This is verse 24. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die, and God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land into the land which he swore to Abraham, Isaac, and to Jacob. Now get that. When I die, God's going to visit you. And he's going to bring you out of this land into the land which he swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. See, when God would visit you, is not just to show up in your life, but it's to take you from one land to another. Amen. Joseph was saying, hey, hey, the blessing is on me. And my prayer is now the blessing on you. And the blessing that's on me is now on you. And this empowerment that's on me is now on you. And God's going to visit you. And you know what? You're going to take ground. You're going to take territory. And you're going to advance his kingdom. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 33. Sorry for me to teach this morning, right? Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 33, verse 1. And this is the blessing where with Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. So the blessing was on Moses. Moses now blesses the children of Israel. Let's go to Joshua chapter 1. Talking about taking ground and advancing the kingdom. Verse 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses, my minister, 
Moses, my servant, is dead, so now arise, take this place. And go over this Jordan, you and all this people, into the land which I'm giving to them, the Israelites. So Moses now prayed for the blessing to come on the children of Israel so they could take the land that God had told them to take. Every place upon the sole of your foot shall tread. That have I given to you as I promised Moses. From the wilderness in this Lebanon to the great river Euphrates. Verse 5. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. Hallelujah. I will not fail you nor forsake you. Verse 6. Test 1. There we go. Verse 6. Be strong and of good courage for... For you shall cause this people to inherit the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. That they're going to inherit the land that was sworn to who? Abraham. So this blessing that was on them throughout time was always about taking land, taking ground and what? Advancing the kingdom. Only you be strong and courageous that you may do all that the law which Moses my servant command you. Turn not to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe and do according to all that's written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous. Then you'll deal wisely and have good success. You see, the blessing. What is the blessing? For the sake of confusion, you have to understand the blessing can't be defined to one word. Just like grace can't be defined to one word. Just as the Spirit of God can't be defined to one word. Just as the anointing can't be defined to one word. Just as power can't be defined to one word. So when I say the blessing, what am I saying? I'm saying the Spirit. When I say the blessing, I'm saying the anointing. When I say the blessing, I'm saying the power. When I say the blessing, I'm saying the grace. You see, there's no difference in the New Testament grace versus the Old Testament, the blessing. They're the same thing. They both come from God and they help man do what he can't do in his own ability. So when you talk about the blessing to take ground and take take territory or advance the kingdom, you're saying the grace of God is on them to take ground and advance the kingdom. When they say the blessing, it's saying, all right, the anointing of God is on them to take ground and advance the kingdom of God. The power is on them to take ground and advance the kingdom of God. So whatever we're talking about, the blessing, whether it's grace, the spirit of, whatever it is, you have to understand that while we're positioned in Christ, we're positioned in the blessing. When we're in Christ, we're positioned in the anointing. When we're in Christ, we're positioned in grace. When we're in Christ, we're positioned... In a place where we know who we are. We're sons of God, but we also know what's on our life. The anointing's on my life. Grace is on my life. Power's on my life. The Holy Ghost is on my life. You see, and when you understand that the blessing was all about taking taking territory, now when you can see yourself positioning Christ, you can recognize that the same blessing that was on them is that same blessing is on me, and that same blessing is meant to do the same thing, is to take ground and advance the kingdom of God. Let's go to Galatians chapter 3. Hallelujah. Mm. Yeah. Before we read, let me, let me quote a scripture to you. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus Christ with Holy Ghost, with the Holy Ghost. Could that also be the blessing? How God blessed the anointed. See, <laughs> How God anointed, how God blessed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost, with the blessing. I I would say the Holy Ghost is a blessing, wouldn't you? (laughs) Joey, wouldn't you say the Holy Ghost is a blessing? (laughs) He keeps on giving, amen? He's always there. (laughs) He never gets tired. He always shows up when we yield to him. He's always wanting to direct us and pass the truth. He's there to comfort us. I'd say that's a, that's a, the Holy Ghost is a major blessing. 
And so the Holy Ghost came upon Jesus to anoint him, <laughs> for him to go about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. See, the blessing is just an understanding that God's with you. And when Jesus said that the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, would not only be with you, be in you, but be with you, would be in you. So you have to understand that this blessing, this anointing, this grace, this power, this strength is on my life to cause me to take, to take ground and advance his kingdom. Hallelujah. Now let's look at Galatians 3. O oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only would I learn of. Receive ye by the Spirit, receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Meaning, why are you foolish, Galatians? Did you begin in this aspect and you think you're going to continue in another? Did you receive the Spirit by faith or was it by your works? Verse 3, are you so foolish having begun in the Spirit? Are you made perfect by the flesh? Meaning the Spirit came upon you. The blessing came on you when you accepted Christ. Do you think you're going to fulfill the call on your life without it? You didn't get saved on your own, so you're not going to perfect yourself on your own, and you're not going to fulfill what you've been called to do on your own. You and I, we are nothing without the blessing. We're nothing without grace. We're nothing without his ability. We're nothing without his power. Jesus said, apart from him, I can do nothing. So Jesus was saying, apart from the blessing, I can't do anything. Have you suffered so many things in vain, if it yet be yet in vain? He therefore that ministered to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, does he by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed and it was counted to him as righteousness. Verse 7, know ye therefore they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Amen. Let's look at verse 9. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. <laughs> Go ahead, Joseph. <laughs> so then they would are, are blessed with. I'm blessed. The things that we just read about Abraham going from a place of humiliation to a, to a place of abundance, it says that through faith I am blessed with faithful Abraham. I'm blessed with him. I am powered with him. I'm anointed just like him. I have the ability to take ground just like Abraham took ground. I have the ability to prosper like Abraham prospered. I have the ability for God to make my name famous just like Abraham's name was made famous. The same. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. For as many are the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that continues in all these things which are in the book of the law. Meaning, meaning you're never going to walk in what Abraham walked in if you're going to do it in your head. If you're going to do it by trying to fulfill certain laws. It's only going to come by faith. Verse 11, but that no man justified by the law in the sight of God is evident for the just shall live by faith. And these scriptures, actually multiple messages within these scriptures. I just don't have time to. Verse 12, and the law is not of faith. The man that does them shall live in them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse. So Christ redeemed me from having ground taken from me. If the blessing gains ground, then what does the curse do? It loses ground. So I've been redeemed from losing ground. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the ground, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is, being made, <laughs> cursed is everyone that hangs on the tree. Verse 14, that, so that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. Now get this, so when I'm positioned in Christ, the blessing of Abraham comes on my life. That we might receive, so what is actually the blessing? That we might receive the promise of the Spirit. You being the, 
The blessing of Abraham didn't come in my life so I could get saved and then live any way I want to. And then just say grace as some sort of band-aid. No, I received Christ so the blessing of Abraham could come on me that we might receive the promise of the Spirit. You see, this is all about the, pro- the blessing is the promise of the Spirit. And the Spirit on my life, the anointing on my life, the grace on my life, the power on my life is to cause me to take ground and advance His kingdom. Hallelujah. Let's ver- look at verse... Hmm. Verse 15, brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannuls or adds to it, meaning no man can change what God's already established. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He said not unto seeds as of many, but as one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. So when we accept Christ, we are The seed, not just seeds. We are the seed. We are in Christ. It's not Christ and just many. No, we are Christ. We we are in Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Verse 24. So the law served to us Jews as a trainer, our guardian, our guide to Christ, to lead us unto Christ, came that we might be justified by and through faith. But now that faith has come, we're no longer under a trainer. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. Let me ask you a question. Is everyone on the planet Earth a child of God? No. See, many people say, well, every, everyone's God's children. Not according to this scripture. It says we are children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. What made you a son of God was your faith in Christ Jesus, not just because you're breathing. For as many as were baptized, immersed into Christ, spiritual union and communion with Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, have put on and clothed yourselves with Christ. You're clothed with Christ. You're clothed with Christ. You're clothed with Christ. You're not clothed with Jesus. You're clothed with Christ. Hmm. You're clothed with Christ. As we all know, Christ wasn't Jesus' last name. Christ represented... Jesus was who he was. Christ represented what was on his life. And you'll never be able to take ground if you don't know who you are and what's on your life. Jesus took ground because he was Jesus and he knew he was God's beloved son. But how did he do it? It was the Christ part. You've been clothed with Christ. There's now no distinction between Jew and Greek. There's neither slave nor free. There's neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then are you Abraham's offspring and heirs, heirs according to the promise. Hallelujah. I'm heir according to the promise. I'm a partaker of everything that God declared and prophesied over Abraham. And Abraham's declaration over him had everything to do with taking ground and advancing the kingdom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank positioned in Christ. Who are you? You're a son of God. What's on your life? Christ is on your life. The Spirit of God's on your life. The anointing's on your life. Grace is on your life. Power is on your life. Peace is on your life. The Holy Ghost is on your life. Oh, thank you, Father. Now, I'm going to deal with one of them. I'm going to talk about, I'm, going to, I'm not going to be able to finish this this morning. I, so I believe this Lord wants me to deal with one more thing. Go to Philippians. Thank you, Father. Mm. Thank you, Father. Why do we need to position ourselves in Christ? 
It gives us the right and the ability to take territory. This isn't about world domination or being violent. It's about resting in his love, resting in his grace that will strengthen our lives and influence the world. Thank you, Father. So when we position ourselves in him and we recognize that we're sons of God and we recognize what's in our life, what does it do? And I'm going to deal with one of them right now and the rest I'll pick up next week. When we recognize that we're in him, what does it do on us? We recognize that grace is on us and we recognize this. Let's look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 10. He said, I was made very happy in the Lord that now you have received your interest in my welfare after such a long time. You're indeed thinking of me, but you had no opportunity to show it. Now that I'm implying that I was in personal want, for I've learned how to be content, satisfied, to the point where I am not disturbed or disquieted in whatever state I'm in. Can you say that? (laughs) That no matter what state you're in, how the Amplified says it, satisfied to the point that I've learned how to be content, satisfied to the point where I'm not disturbed or disquieted. Not disturbed or disquieted. In whatever state I'm in. See, this blessing on our life is not just a good Christian word. It's understanding what's on my life. And when you truly understand who you are and what's on your life, it doesn't matter what the enemy throws at you. And if you've been here on Wednesday nights in in our series of I Don't Care, and if you haven't listened to them, you need to. Because it's all about being able to tap into the peace of God by understanding your position. And here he says, I know how to, whatever state I'm in, I know how to survive. I know, in verse 12, I know how to abase and live humbly in straightened circumstances, and I know also how to enjoy plenty and live in abundance. I have learned in any and all circumstances the secret, the secret of facing every situation. Paul says there's a secret to facing every situation. Whether well-fed or going hungry, having a sufficiency and enough to spare, or going without and being in want, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I'm ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Paul saying, in the anointing, I don't lack anything. In grace, I don't lack anything. In the spirit, I don't lack anything. I know how to base. I know how to abound. King James, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ, through Christ. I can do all things through grace. I can do all things through the anointed one and his anointing. I can do all things through the Holy Ghost. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You see, remember Abraham, he went from a place of humility to a place of strength and abundance. And Paul t- lets us know how he did it. I can do all things through the anointing. Yeah, right now I see this in front of me, but you know what? I can do all things through Christ who's anointed me. I can do all things through Christ who's empowered me. I can do all things, whatever you're looking at, whatever you're going through, whatever you're facing, whatever obstacle standing before you, you need to look at it and say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's not I can do all things. No, I can do all things through the anointing. I can do all things through grace. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. So when we're positioned in him, we're positioned in a place where we can do anything. See, when you position yourself in Christ, you've now taken all limits off. Oh, Father, we receive your word today. 
and we receive the challenge that it brings. We receive the power that it brings, Father. And I thank you for the Holy Spirit that's in this place that has been working with the Word has been working with the Word. Father, I thank you, Lord, that there's a newfound revelation, newfound revelation in hearts and minds in this place. And I declare that the enemy will not steal one word. Not one word that I've spoken today will fall to the ground, but it will go and produce. Father, I thank you, Lord, that we as a body of believers, we recognize that it's our season to take ground and advance the kingdom. It's our season. It's our time to go forward. It's our season. It's our time to to make progress. It's our season, our time to see a great harvest in the kingdom of God. It's a great time for a great harvest in the kingdom of God. It's time that Crowley, hallelujah, understand and recognize grace, recognize the anointing, recognize who Christ is and what Christ provided. I thank you that there's a fresh anointing on this house. There's a fresh anointing. There's great grace on this house. Great grace is on this house. I prophesy that great grace is on this house and is on every single person in this place. Great grace, great grace to do what they never could do in their own ability. I declare it's time to rise and the enemy needs to be scattered. I declare it's time to arise and people to step in. How it is time for the kingdom of God to increase and for that government to continue to increase and peace to increase. Because it is your passion and it is your desire. And we thank you for it, Father. We praise you for it, Father. Hallelujah. We step into our position. We step into grace. We step into the anointing. We step into power. We step into that building because it's in that we can do all things. We can do all things. Hallelujah. We can do all things. Hallelujah. Because that presence is you. That presence is you in the flesh. And just as you were with Joshua, hallelujah, and take the promised land that you swore that you would be with him and not leave him or forsake him, I thank you that same blessing is a a recognition of you with us and you on us in every way. So we receive it and we believe it and we declare that we are taking territory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We need to enforce our authority. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Enforce your authority over the enemy. Taking ground. We're taking ground. Like I said, this isn't about natural violence. This isn't about hating the world. This this is about being the greatest light you can be into the world. Because, man, what would it be if just all of us, just think if all of us were clothed head to toe, inside and out, filled with Christ and the Holy Ghost and recognize that the blessing, that we're not trying to get the blessing on us if we just recognize it is already on us. Man, Apostle Paul said said that, that that Satan came to buffet him. He said to send a messenger of Satan to buffet him. Some of you have been buffeted way too many times and for way too long. Because the answer that Jesus, the head of the church, gave to him and said, my, my grace is sufficient for you. That sounds like I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Being positioned in Him. Mm. Father, we receive it. We receive it. And continue to build this on the inside of us. That we're taking ground. And we're advancing your kingdom. One step at a time. Mm. Thank you, Father. Mm. If you receive that today, give Him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
feel like the spirit of Keith Moore coming on me. I'm like, <laughs> kind of, you, you don't stop. You just, you, you just have to find a place to stop, and we'll pick up next week. Hallelujah. Mm. But I feel like I've finished my assignment today. Mm. Hallelujah. You're going to be here next week. Don't want to miss it. Hallelujah. Go back and listen to this word. Now it's free online. Keith Marsha says, if it's free, what does that mean? No excuse. No excuse. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Mm. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Mm. I don't have anything, but if someone else does, be obedient. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. God is good. Mm. Yeah. All right. Hallelujah. Thank you. One. Turn there. Please. Thank you. Hallelujah. I had this last week too, and uh, it wasn't for then, it was for now. Verse 11. Well, verse 10. Joshua 1. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass to the host and command the people, saying, Prepare you victuals or victuals or food, for within three days you shall pass over the Jordan mm. t- to go in. Mm. Hallelujah. To go in and possess. Amen. And possess. Amen. Amen. Say, I've already crossed over. I've already crossed over. It's mine. It's my land. I have it now. It's not something I'm getting. I already have it. Now give God a shout. Hallelujah. It's your land. It's your land. You have to take it by faith. Amen. You have to take it by faith. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. I guess that's why the Lord had me stop reading in verse 9. So, Because I was going to keep reading that, but the Lord said, don't go there. So, hallelujah. So, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good. So, thank you, Father. Take it.